so yeah, this is our friendly protester, Sarah. She's here every day. Right now, about one in every three women has an abortion at some point in the United States. Um, We're gonna be working together today, okay? I can't fix all of the other stuff that potentially led to that being a situation that she is having to now manage. I can't fix the fact that she no longer has her same insurance, or she's now in the second trimester because it took her 10 weeks to raise the money to be able to get here. But I can fix her immediate problem. Okay, how are you feeling right now? We'll just kind of have you hang out here for a little bit. All right. A lot of times people say, you know, why do women get abortions? Like, what do they say? And I say, you know, honestly, for the majority of procedures I do, I have no idea why they're gonna abortion, because I don't ask. I feel like going next door. You can walk. As a provider, you have to ask yourself, who in the room knows what's best for that woman's situation? You know, is it me, or is it her? Now we're at a juncture where we have a government that's trying to outlaw abortion, stigmatize it, defund it, and to do so is not going to mean that abortion is going to go away. Have you found that some students are really passionate about it but um, are too scared to actually do it afterwards because we've all heard, you know, the horrific news stories? The transition to freestanding clinics it had some downstream consequences. Abortion providers began to be viewed as outside the mainstream of medicine. They're kind of viewed as rogue physicians. Dr. George Tiller was my former boss. After he was assassinated, it was either pack up and find a different line of work or dig in and not let these extremists, these terrorists, um, tell us what to do. I go to Oklahoma City and Wichita because there aren't doctors that perform particularly second trimester abortions in those states. So I'm just going to feel your cervix, okay? It's okay. Are you, Are you nervous? nervous? Oh, that's normal. It's okay. Right? Everybody's nervous before this. The people that came into abortion care a generation or so ago came into it out of feminism and watching so many women suffer under illegal abortion. It's not about are you for adoption, are you for abortion, are you for birth justice, are you for LGBTQ rights. A reproductive justice framework allows for the intersectionality of these issues. Abortion becomes more psychologically messy because of this other potential being. If we don't talk about it, the stigma continues. If you're going to be pro-choice, you need to know what actually happens.